Good morning, gentlemen, and possibly ladies. Oh, yeah, I gotta do something about this. Look how crooked they cut my hair. I was like, I was combing, I'm like, what the hell's going on? Look, look how much I got in this back corner, okay? It's like, bro, which one am I supposed to do? Do I do I go this way? So I have some some hanging down over the fade, but nothing going, and it's like sticking straight up over here, or do I go this way? So I got a hard part that goes into nothing over here. I, I, I don't know what the hell that's about. I got to go to that guy because he's the only one who can do a razor. But 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 then but then he just chopped. But apparently I got to go to two barbers anyway. Yeah, so that was that was that was bothering me the other day. <laughs> so like, I just realized like how different sections of my hair are all different lengths and yeah. And right now I got the Ace Ventura anyway. So just this is continuing on the fats movement. It just seems to be everywhere. It's but one thing about this movement I'll say more than any other is the complete transparency of hypocrisy, right? They, uh, they don't even try to hide it. If you look up fat acceptance memes, like literally every picture is just this 5'1", 400 pound chick with like fucking arm flab wider than a watermelon but not a solid, not solid like a watermelon, more like um, a balloon the size of a watermelon filled with tapioca pudding, right? And the guy in it, though, has, like, fucking pecs bigger than mine, arms, abs, and he's this fucking tall, and, that's, and it's like, and they'll flat out say, you know, just because you have a few extra, a few, <coughs> triple digits over pounds doesn't mean you can't have the man you deserve so they're still judging us this again you know we all know that beauty at all sizes only goes one way it definitely doesn't come our way gents it goes one way and but they still feel they deserve they they're still they still have a one through ten hotness scale for bros but they all just want us to get rid of the nine through one and say they're all fucking tens. Actually, they don't care. They don't care if the average 5'5", five, five, 160, carrying a little around the waist, balding, uh, making 30 grand a year guy finds them attractive or not because they won't date that guy. They still feel above that guy. They just want one rating for women that it's a supermodel, the, you know, the Eastern European supermodel, the, uh that, oh, Selma Hayek, mm, five, four. I, I heard E. I heard they're beyond Ds, they're Es. It's crazy. Hispanic genetics, man. Anyway, they, they want that, uh, they want to be, they want to say that they're the same as that. They're the same as that. They're the same as Selma Hayek. They're the same as Mila Jovovich. They're, I don't know who's hot today. Megan Fox, I don't know. Don't keep up with the, the local celebrity. Oh, Chloe Grace Moretz. I don't know. What is it with Chloe? Some pictures you're just like, mm-hmm. Other pictures you're like, oof. But hey, sometimes you know you get the wrong angle. I mean, look look at my hair right now. I can't I can't get it to do nothing. I just woke up. And so anyway, they that's all that's all it is. But make no mistake about it, gentlemen. If you're overweight, they're like, ah, that guy doesn't deserve me. No, I still deserve the guy with abs. Uh, in the one, they will argue fat jeans all day. Not, not, not jeans. Ah, jeans with a G, G E N E, genetics that for themselves. Not that they're fucking eating ice cream sandwiches, deep fried in Crisco and butter, and put on a plate of bacon all day. No, 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 no. That has nothing to do with it. I'm just. It's just some people's metabolisms are different. Like. Do you have any idea how rare that is? Do you have any idea? Well, I do, because I looked it up. <laughs> yes. But, I mean, common sense should tell us all, right? You know, the, the trans movement tries the same thing. No, there are guys with a penis born with a Y chromosome. Look at this one case back in 1963 in Singapore. You know, and... Okay. So, we already know... That trans people, well, the left doesn't. They think it's like 10% of the population. Um, well, 
kids today pretending to be non-binary certainly are getting close to that number, but real authentic trans people, it's three in a thousand. So as a percentage, that looks like 0 0.3, okay? And so these uh, genetic anomalies, women born with Y chromosome, uh, dudes with ovaries inside them, which I think we discussed this before, is usually the case of Siamese twins that didn't become twins or twins that never developed. There was two embryos and then they, uh, somewhere in the womb became one. That's why you have these guys who, they don't even know it. They don't even know it. They function just like you or I. And then one day on an x-ray show, oh my God, you have dormant ovaries. He was supposed to have a sister. Okay, that is just never developed. A uh, woman with internal testes. Like, she had no idea. She's been getting railed, having other wings, and testes slap against that, right? And she had no idea until, you know, a gynecologist or an x-ray or something revealed it. And, and she would have gone her whole life without knowing that. Because it doesn't bother us because they're dormant. The organs don't work. They don't affect us. Affect us. They were just in development when you were that big and... And then stopped. So these genetic anomalies are more rare than trans people themselves. So you know if so if that's you're going to be your argument, right? X Y or men born with no Y, women born with a Y, internal testing, etc. Then then it should be less than three in a thousand. Then it would be like three in one hundred thousand. And so that's not a good argument they want to be making. And these uh, fat activists, body positivity majors. They want, yeah, major, because that's a class now. Yeah, anyway, yeah, 60 grand in debt to uh, say that all chicks are tens and guys, guys in the pictures, you know, when, when it comes to guys, we don't have the fat gene, right? They still want a guy who fucking does a million delt flies to get his shoulders out to here. They still want a guy who bench presses a fucking four wheels on each side. And still watches his calories enough, is counts every gram of protein and carbs and fat that he puts in his mouth so that he can have abs as well as grow these giant muscles. They still like that. But with for them, oh fat gene, fat gene, Dusty. Yeah. If you take a picture, you just need to look at a picture of a public swimming pool in the 60s, 70s, probably even the early 80s. You won't find a single fat person. If you do, there'll be one. One. Today, if you take a random picture at a public swimming pool, seven out of ten will be fat. There wasn't a fat gene lying dormant for centuries inside the human being, and then it just exploded along with the explosion of fast food in America. Say, so, so maybe, so maybe again, just 50 years ago. No fat people, or less than one in a hundred, one in a hundred, whatever. Now it's seven out of ten. Seven, and that goes for us too, guys. That's us too, not just chicks. Seven out of ten, and so maybe that has less to do with a uh, dormant fat gene and metabolisms that just crashed in the last fifty years, or maybe it has something to do with that in nineteen seventy. I think the average American ate something like five or six pounds of cheese a year. Now it's 40. The average human being consumed about four or five pounds of sugar a year. Now it's 60. Okay. Maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe because we used to have home cooked, you know, home cooked meals 95% of the time, 90, 95%. We made our own lunches. Now, you know, we go through the drive through twice a day, right? And and at home, our home cooked meal is pop tarts. So, uh, it's it, I'm not entirely unsympathetic. I get it because I do it myself, uh, especially during a bulking phase. But I, I, like I try to explain to people, my my entire existence consists of bulking phases, and then when the muffin top gets too high. Because you need to consume extra. You need to be in a calorie surplus. You need to eat more than you're burning to gain muscle mass and fat mass. And you're going to gain some fat mass while you do it. There's some people who can do it just right and just gain muscle. I'm not one of them. So what I do, so I typically eat in excess. I will throw in a cheeseburger every now and then. I'll throw in some candy just because, just because, like, 
it's hard to meet my calorie needs and being a calorie surplus eating just rice and meat and vegetables all the day. So, so I throw in some, I intentionally throw in, but you know, you can't fool me because I have to eat literally until I'm sick several times a day. I mean, to the point where I'm just like, oh man, I just dropped my phone and I have to calculate. Like I'm going to put one foot out to the side, get this fucking belly. Cause I just ate a fucking three pound burrito and I'm, Ah, fuck it. Hold my breath and I have heartburn after I bend over. I'm like going up to see my boss. Fuck, stairs. When's he going to get an elevator? Man, uh, uh, using the handrail towards the end of a bulking cycle. I'm a fucking sweaty, panting mess, right? And so when I, I actually look forward to the cutting because no, contrary to popular belief, you don't starve yourself. That's what these weenie whining victims do with the victim mentalities, right? They go... They go right from eating 4,000 calories of shit and cake and burgers and ice cream sandwiches to go to a carrot. Ah, I'm so hungry. Well, yeah, because you're you. They do it on purpose. I don't. Maybe some of them are that ignorant, but mostly I think they're dumb. They want to starve themselves for three days. I am so weak. And now I can't do anything. And I haven't even lost a pound. It's been three days. Three days I've had three carrots. Ah, I'm so weak. Yeah, no shit. So a smart person calculates, okay, on average, you know, during a bulk, it's pretty simple for me. One gram of protein, one gram of fat, two grams of carbs per pound of body weight. So if you're 200 pounds, that's going to be 200 grams of fat and protein each 400 grams of carbs. That's a lot of fucking carbs to get down too. And you're going to, and then during a cutting cycle, I immediately, first thing I do is I just cut the carbs and fat. Now I'm going to do 1.5 or yeah, 1.5 and 0.7 on the fat. So again, if I'm 200 pounds, uh, the protein is still 200. The carbs is going to be 1.5. The fat is going to be, what's that? Uh, 140? Yeah, 140. So that's it. I'll do that for four weeks. Then four weeks, if I'm really cutting hard, I'll increase the protein 1.3. So now we're looking at two, assuming I didn't lose weight, right? Two, 230. And then the carbs get cut again. Now one, uh, 200. I'll match the carbs with my body weight. The fat gets cut to 0.5, 100. You're still not starving. Okay. Cause you need to create, you know, to gain weight. This is the weight line to gain it. You got to eat more than you need to lose it. You got to eat less than you need. It's that fucking simple. No, you're not going to starve. Sure. Yeah. You don't get to go through the drive through and stuff your face with nachos bel grande and then go to the KFC. And I do this in a bulking cycle. I do this. So I know you fat bastards can't fucking fool me. I know. I know. Cause this is exactly what I do. Shoot. I, I had to work through lunch. KFC, five strips, uh, mac and cheese, coleslaw. I go right around to Taco Bell, get a burrito and nachos and a drink this big full of sugar, you know, fucking my, my 1970 uh, yearly annual income of sugar in that one cup in that one day, right? So I know what it takes to put on weight and I know what it takes to lose it. And no, so losing it, you're not starving. You're just not eating crap and you're just not forcing yourself to eat when you're not hungry you you can go okay that's enough for the, for right now push it aside so all these attacks on on celebrities and stuff today i like yeah i know a lot of them are spoiled rat spoiled brats too but and rats sure I'll, i'm sticking with that i said it by accident but i'll stick with it uh but no it's not all plastic surgery and stuff guys uh some of it is sometimes you lose a lot of weight you know, they get the, the skin removed or whatever. But no, it's not all surgery. Some of it is. The Kardashians definitely. Um, look up a picture of them before surgery. My God. It's like the Munsters. Anyway, or the Oblongs. Anybody watch that? The Oblongs? That's what the Kardashians were before plastic surgery. Okay, anyway, my phone's dying. But guys, that's what it takes. Again, they still expect you to do this. They still want you to have shoulders wider than mine, pecs wider than mine arms bigger than that but they still and abs but they want to be 400 pounds they still want you to count all the macros i just counted but they're going to do uh 10 carbs per pound of body weight 20 grams of fat per pound of body weight and and expect you to love them so it's bullshit it's we all know it's one-sided so don't fall for it and 
That's all I got today. Get out of my trailer.